Warning, zero style is known to cause gas or gear acquisition syndrome. Prolonged exposure to me and my vlog may cause you to buy knives, flashlights, patches, pouches, pocket trash, EDC junk, and video games that you may or may not need. You've been warned. Welcome to this retro-themed episode of Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero, coming at you this week from my home arcade, aka my bedroom. We've got a sweet Nintendo-themed selection of Ranger eye patches, some cool official Nintendo gear, some sweet knives, pocket trash, you know the deal if you've been to this channel before. And if not, stay tuned because I'm gonna take you on a deep dive in the new Data Crew What A Junior pouch. This video is undoubtedly gonna be long, like a half an hour like all my videos are. There's time code jumps down to all of the stuff if you wanna skip around, if I bore you on one product, you wanna to go to the next thing. Also gonna try my best to link to all of these things down in the description below. A lot of them are limited edition, but I'll at least link you to the maker so you can follow them to see what kind of new stuff that they're coming out with. This is the new X-Pack, ripstop nylon edition of this pouch. You can see this all black ripstop nylon here a sweet PVC Ranger eye patch sewn directly onto the pouch. YKK waterproof zips all the way around this pouch. And then a full web field for your Ranger eye patch selection. If you're not familiar, Ranger eyes are PVC plastic patches, morale patches, that go on to bags, pouches, things like that, that have Velcro hook and loop on them. You can personalize your gear and make it exactly the way you want it to be. And if you're like me, you can do that every single day because you have an insane collection of patches. Anyhow, I'm an ultra gamer nerd, especially when it comes to retro consoles. I've been playing them since I was a little kid, I've been collecting them ever since. I'm going to take you on a Nintendo themed trip on this week's pouch dump. The pouch opens up clamshell so you can see all of the gear that you've got inside of here. And I'm just gonna go right ahead and start with the elephant in the room. What is this, man? If you've seen my channel, if you watch my Instagram and YouTube, you've seen me posting this the last couple days. This is an officially licensed Nintendo product. It is a D-pad from an NES controller meticulously recreated in a little keychain style fidget toy. This comes from the Nintendo Tokyo Gacha Gacha machines. You know what those are? Those are like the coin operated machines where you turn the crank, it goes gacha gacha, and then the little plastic ball comes out randomly with a toy in it. Yeah, Nintendo made a whole series of these with the North American Nintendo NES and the Famicom versions of these. Three different ones, a D-pad, the start select, and then the A-B buttons. As a fighting game, Fiend, I definitely thought the D-pad was the way to go. And you know, I've always kind of wanted to just make my logo be the Nintendo D-pad X for Zero. This isn't a gaming channel, so I just, I don't know. But anyhow, I love this thing, man. It's so simple. It's got a little click to it, but you can make it quieter if you don't hit it hard. But like, you can, you can make this thing make some noises, even though it's just got the rubber dome membrane of an old school keyboard basically inside of it. There's a teeny tiny little spot here that you could put some micro cord, or as I'm going to do right here, it comes with like a little ball chain necklace style. I have two beads on here, both of these, one's from Etsy, and then the other is from OEG EDC. I kind of thought it looked like a Mario ghost chasing Mario. I don't know. I don't really love putting a lanyard on this thing, honestly. I think it's much better form factor where it just have it like this. When you have the lanyard on it, you can't do this move. And I really enjoy just spinning it like this. This is very, it's satisfying, it's simple. There's not much to it. It's just a little Nintendo controller D-pad. Let's take a look at it compared to a real Nintendo controller because I've got them. You can see right here, it's not quite as tall, but it's very similar. The thickness is the same, the width is the same, the layout of the D-pad, even the arrows are the same. Looks great. It's a perfect reproduction for a fidget toy from Nintendo and an officially licensed product. I know Cosmonew Kev is excited to hear it officially licensed in this video. When I saw the new Accessorize Me Whiteout video, I was like, oh, Vince beat me to the punch on another cool fidget toy again. But his is a aftermarket product, not the officially licensed Nintendo product. Gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, back here in the pouch, this guy just fits right here in the back side of the What a Junior. There's another pocket here on the back that I'm not utilizing because this thing's pretty thick on its own. Over here on the other side, we've got this nice stretchy webbing. 
See how nice this stretches? This allows you to change whatever you have in here. It could be a little flashlight like this or a big knife, and it'll just change to whatever form factor that you need it to. Like one of my favorite knives. The Dam Designs Gin. This is the full black washed titanium edition of the gin. It is a nice little three and a half fingered knife. Put a lanyard bead like this one from Justin Coke and Plague. This is a resin glow in the dark sacred terror skull bead. See if I can get a little bit of glow biz going for you in broad daylight. Beautiful aqua glow, sort of teal color on this bead. To help you index the knife in the night if it comes to that. Take a look at the pocket clip here. Nice milled metal. It's not super deep, but it's very high. You can see the liner lock on this guy. Beautiful blade profile. We've got really aggressive jimping for the harpoon grind here on the top. The back side here, you can see where the lanyard tube and backspacer are. On this knife, I actually opted to just put the lanyard through one side of the tube. I actually think that it makes the knife lay a little bit better. It's a little thinner. It doesn't have to stick out all the way. I just, I think it works out better to just use one side. Some frame locks work like this, some don't. This one does. This is a front flipper. You can see the front flipper tab here on the front. You can deploy this a myriad of different ways. You can use your thumb. You can use your index finger, you can do the reach over, you can do a spidey flick, you can do whatever you want. Because it's titanium frame lock, it's got beautiful acoustics. I love the way that this knife sounds, it rings. You got the sweet pivot collar here on the back side. I really love the little design details on this knife. Back side similar, but just some spheres. See that beautiful hype harpoon grind here how aggressive the front flipper jimping is that allows you to just flip that thing right out. I really dig the Jin's design language. These blackened titanium scales are so haggard. Look at the texturing on them. I think that sort of contrast between the two looks great. Definitely a badass knife. This blade is S35VN steel. It is a fingerprint magnet but it is so slicey. I have never had to sharpen this knife. I carry it and use it quite a bit. The Damn Designs Gin, one of my favorite knives. I'm going for the Nintendo black and gray aesthetic, I guess. You see right here, the little stretchy webbing. You put it in here, the pocket clip is gonna wanna try and sit here. I don't really like that, so I often flip my knives over so the pocket clip goes down, so it's a little bit smoother action in and out of the pouch. Next to that over here, got one of my favorite flashlights from Roy Vivon. This is the Aurora A4 TI Pro Edition. Got that coupled up with a little Sacred Terror Skull Bead collab from Plague and Justin Coke in Titanium. This is a 650 lumen USB-C light, just slightly bigger than a AAA battery. What's really cool about this light is it's got one button on it and it goes right to turbo when you hold it, let go and it'll turn right off. Double tap it and it'll go into memory mode. Yeah, I didn't read the directions because it doesn't actually come with them. You have to get on the internet and look them up and read the directions. But turns out that this flashlight actually has memory mode. So you can have it remember, I want this to go on medium or moonlight or something else besides turbo, which was my biggest gripe with this flashlight. So knowing that it has some memory mode and I'm actually able to make this go immediately on double tap to not the brightest lumens is great because I feel like the highest lumen output of this thing is just too floody for direct up close and personal action. Being able to just immediately double tap into moonlight is what I like the most, but I think medium works pretty well and that's what I've had it on recently. You can see the Cree XPL LED with the orange peel pattern all around it. That's actually what makes this the pro version of this flashlight. That little bit of orange peeling on the inside makes the light a lot floodier and just sort of spills out. Even though it's not more lumens, it just makes it go a little bit further. And it works out really well. You can see the full titanium shell of this thing just glistening. I love the little design aesthetics on the edges. Just, it's a very well thought out and well designed flashlight. Because it is rechargeable USB-C, you don't have to buy batteries. You just gotta remember to charge it. And since it's USB-C like everything else these days, it's very easy for you to charge it up. 
Back here in the back, I've got two cards this week. I decided to put my Blockbuster and Exchange cards that I have placeholders that I always use for my ID and debit card in the back of this pouch this week to show you that you totally can use this pouch as a wallet. There's a bunch of different ways that you're able to pull a card in and out of this. You can, you can put it behind the other items on either side internally, as well as using this zippered pocket on the back side. I think the pocket on the back is a little trickier, but it's totally doable, especially if you only carry two cards. So let's dial up some X-Band and get some games going here, huh? Let's party like it's 1999. So that's the internals of the pouch. This thing just zips all the way around clamshell very nicely. It's got this little bit of stretchy stuff here on the back. This allows you to hook this onto a carabiner or a loop if you wanted to put this in a bag or attach it to the inside or the outside of another bag. Very utilitarian if you're into that kind of thing. But you do gotta note that that means that here on the inside of this, this is potentially open. It's very small. Can you see how tight this is here? But you can get your finger to come out between that little tiny gap there if you don't take care. So if you put stuff inside of it, make sure you have them secured within all of your dividers and all of your sections to make sure your stuff doesn't fall out. But I don't carry screws or anything like that in a pouch that would make them fall out. So not something I worry about, but just letting you know. Taking a peek at the patches this week, we've got a couple of Castle Gray scales here. We've got the Game Over DMG in yellow and the red CXG Game Boy cartridge. A little bit of RE Club JRW gear collab, some Tactical Outfitters blue shell, Toxic Patch Co's glow in the dark big boo, and from the Hiro Mitsu Creative Collective, we got this sweet Mega Man. Flipping it out to the inside, more Ranger eyes from Castle Grayscale, the NES controller set, the Hiro Mitsu Creative Collective, the lights in their eyes, Mega Man a Tactical Outfitters, Superstar, and the Smash Brothers gear or monochromatic trashed toad to round off that Nintendo-themed patch setup. Wait a second. There is another pouch. This one's from Zero Feud. This is my super dirty ZF cup size A, the big boy. And I've got four patches here. The collab Weirdo Warios from Smash Brothers Gear and Future Relic Knives. Which one is your favorite? You like the gray scale? Tripping out blue? Classic Wario colors? Or this sort of Genji guy down here? Comment down below your favorite Wario. This pouch has got a little PVC bead, also from our friend over on Etsy who made the Mario bead from earlier. It's a cool little controller. Inside the Weirdo Wario pouch is my current favorite retro game handheld console. This is the Ambernick RG35XX, which I will be referring to as the Double X running Garlic OS. This is custom firmware that is designed specifically for this device. The device has a 1.6 gigahertz quad core processor, as well as a dedicated GPU and 256 megabytes of DDR3 RAM. That gives you enough power to play all of the fourth gen retro consoles, including some of the fifth gens beyond that, like PlayStation 1. This is very much the form factor of a Game Boy Pocket. I mean, it is so Game Boy Pocket inspired, it's unbelievable. But here on the back where the cartridge would normally be, this new modern day device has four very nice shoulder buttons. The newer version, they are angled and more ergonomic, but I don't find myself playing a ton of shoulder button games where I need all four so I don't really, I'm not bothered by that that much. You can take a look at all the game consoles I have installed right now between the arcade, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Turbo Graphics, Neo Geo, Sega, Game Boy Color, Virtual Boy, Sega CD, PlayStation 1. So we're doing a Nintendo thing, let's go with NES. So we scroll down, we can see Got the title and artwork as well as box artwork for all of our games and ROMs. If we press right and left, 
we can actually page up and page down through this list to go through it a little bit faster. Link down in the description below for all of the instructions for setting up Garlic OS. This is not a tutorial video. It plays everything from Game Boy, NES, all the way up to PlayStation. It also can play crazy stuff like Virtual Boy, consoles that you might not have access to actually play, let alone be able to find all of the games for that console to play the good ones. We'll go to Super Wario Land. Here's our Virtual Boy bootloader. I'm going to turn on fast forward mode. One of the best things about using a pocket emulator is being able to run better hardware for these games, so why not run them faster and actually make this game a lot more fun and playable? As you can tell, this is not 3D, right? We're emulating Virtual Boy in 2D, something that you literally can't do in real life. You just can't play this game in 2D in any other way, even if you really do have the console like I do. Also, for all you out there, I just want to point out, I have this game right here. I am not pirating anything at all. Look at this legit copy of Wario Land for Virtual Boy we just played. So if we go into Retro Arch, we can come down here to Load Core, and it'll show you all of the different BIOS files that are available for you. Now, by default, they're going to try and choose their own, the ones they think are the best. A lot of the time for arcade games, you're going to get this MAME 2003 plus or just regular MAME 2000. But you'll notice that a lot of arcade games play really well with this MAME Extreme firmware. So it's just a little bit of trial and error of figuring out which one works best for whatever game it is that you're playing. Googling them, just Retro Arch and the name of the game that you're looking for, as well as settings will often help you find things on like a Reddit post where someone was like, oh, I'm having sound issues. Just a quick Google search can help you optimize the gameplay of so many games. And that's the real power that RetroArch gives you. It allows you to tweak individual settings for these games. If you want scan lines, if you want overscan, for games like Game Boy, the original one that didn't have color, you can choose what color palette that you want. Do you want to put banners and borders around the game to make them offset? Do you want to scale them linearly? Which, oh my god, linear scaling looks so good for like Game Boy Advance games. So, chef kiss on this thing. This beautiful bright IPS screen is just so colorful. The speakers aren't the greatest. I would say that this is comparable or louder than the Game Boy Advance speaker, which was fine for us for all of those years, and I think it's fine now. My only real gripe with this thing is that you can't hold up and down on the volume rocker. You have to tap, 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 to individually adjust the volume on this thing. But like, besides that, like that is a really minor gripe. So OutRun is one of these games, I love this bootleg version, but it does not run very well. Unless you throw it into fast forward, and then everything runs great, but then you have this terrible fast forward banner. So if you press the menu and X button, it'll drop you into the retro arc settings. Go back one, then go down to settings, then to on-screen display, under notifications, and then notification visibility, Fast forward notifications, you can just turn those right off. You can do the same thing with screenshot or whatever you want. Now if we come back here, we go back to our quick menu and resume the game. We're now totally in fast forward mode. And there is no overlay. You can switch it on, switch it off. There's no visible thing to show you. And that's one of those things that I've mentioned a couple times. Some of these older game consoles, emulation's a little choppy. But throwing them into fast forward mode just makes the gameplay just about normal. Being able to remove that fast forward overlay actually makes the game playable and the experience enjoyable. I never said I was good at OutRun. So if you like that setting and you want to keep it, open your menu up again and then come down here to Overrides and hit Save Core Overrides. You can also do Game Overrides, and whatever settings you apply will save to just this game, but Core Overrides will do it for every arcade game in this case. I'm not a huge beat-em-up kind of guy, but man, I love Aliens and Predator, so an Alien vs. Predator arcade game, that was just for me. We didn't have this title in my local arcade, I would've played the crap out of it. Yeah, if you're looking for good arcade beat-em-ups to play, Man, do I suggest this one. It's a 
Neo Geo. Alright, so on to PlayStation. Here's one of my favorite 2D Metroidvania games. This is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. You hear this audio? Now, the game plays great. Like, the frame rate's awesome, everything works good, but it's a little choppy. So we're gonna go into the Retro Arch menu. We're gonna come down to Latency. We're going to choose the Audio Latency. We're gonna press right and just go all the way down to the absolute highest that we can do. We are going to make sure that frame delay is off, polling behavior is normal. And then, I think I already have this, but under core options, audio, yep. Make sure reverb, sound interpolation, and CD audio are off, and then just make sure that XA decoding is turned on, or there'll be no audio at all. And then we're just going to resume. How much better does that sound? It does still crack but it's less frequent. Doesn't affect gameplay. And you know, you can just turn CD audio completely off and DA decoding and just play the game with sound effects and no background score. But what fun is that? Also, if you like Metroidvania games and you've not played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, this is like my favorite PlayStation 1 game, just period. The bosses, the enemies, the upgrades, the fact that this game basically has like an RPG element to it, it's just, it's an amazing title if you've never played it. I highly suggest it. I am a RPG fan, and you know I'm going to be playing Chrono Trigger on Super Nintendo on this thing. And it's one of those games that, as a retro collector, I'll tell you, the carts are just so insanely expensive, there's no way regular people are going to be expected to pay the price to actually play this game. So emulation's really the only choice that you got. Battles in RPGs, man, fast forward just makes the game so much easier and fun to play. Because all these animations, taking your turns, and all the time that's going to take, it's just so much faster. Especially when they gotta sing about the silver points that they give you every single time. Alright, it's time for the showdown. Super Nintendo Killer Instinct. One of my all-time favorite games. Oh, wait a second, I was already playing this. I gotta restart it. This is Wipeout for PlayStation. Let's quickly pick whatever. Oh yeah, I'm the best Wipeout player ever. Can't even use these shoulder buttons with my thumb. Anyhow, press menu here. You will immediately save your state. Go back into recents here, pick this game. We're immediately gonna pop right back where we were in our save state, right in the middle of this terrible race that I was doing. That is one of my favorite Garlic OS features, is as soon as you press this menu button to quit a game, save state happens right away. Perfect. Also, I suggest turning off what they call incremental save states. That means every time you save, it'll save it, save file one, save file two, save file three. It's not that it's a big amount of data to have multiple save files taking up space on this. Sometimes it's hard for you to remember what save file you're gonna use. If you switch emulator course to another one, you're like, oh, was that 15? Was it 36? I can't remember. And it's just a bunch of trial and error and trying to find your right save file, which if you only use one, that's not a problem you gotta worry about. All right, I think that's enough playing the double X. So I use the larger size ZF cup as a game case. This console fits the footprint of this case absolutely perfectly. 
There's a little bit of padding to it, especially when you got patches on the outside. It's just enough that I feel safe that I'm not going to scratch the console up when it's in a bag. And you can tell that it's super dirty because I throw this down on the table. I often lean the game console up against it. This bag is perfect for the double X. Zero Feud actually has some of these in stock right now, believe it or not. So if you're interested, check it out while you still can. It's winter time here in Pittsburgh, so never be caught dead without a hank. These things are great for snot, for screens, lenses, phones, whatever you got. This is a great utilitarian tool for keeping stuff in order. And this is a lovely Super Mario World print fabric one from my buddies over at Damn Hanks. They're great to get a microfiber backed hank. One side has cotton, the other side has microfiber, some simple embroidery, that's all you need. Keep one side for snot, one side for cleaning stuff, or carry two hanks like I do a lot of the time because I've got two kids. So yeah, snot prevention, tool number one, the hank. Make sure you grab one from somewhere. I don't care where. If you're interested in grabbing yourself a Water Junior or any of the other wonderful Nostalgia Broker products over there at datacrew.la, use my discount code XERO15. Gets you 15% off your entire order. Just a little thanks for me to you to being a viewer here of my channel. Well, that is the Pouch Snoop episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. Click these boxes appearing on my face as I do this outro if you want to check out more of my videos right now. And if no one has told you today, you are a totally radical person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, have some fun, play some retro video games, they're fun, and have yourselves a great day. I'll see you in the next one later on.